Okay, so we are going to get started. By the way, this is my one of my best friends, Kathy. We've been friends since sixth grade, so we've known each other for a very long time. But anyways, um, I'm just prepping her skin there with the Embryolos Cream, and basically that's just going to prime and moisturize her face at the same time. Now I'm gonna move on to brows. Um, as you can see, she has very nice, full eyebrows. So I don't need to do too much work. I'm basically just filling in the sparse areas with the darkest powder in my Morphe brow palette. I'm going to apply a little bit of brow gel just to hold the brows in place, but I wanted to give her more of like a natural bushy brow than like a very sharp, intense brow, if you know what I mean. So um, now I'm just carving out her brow with the HD uh, Graftobian Cream Foundation just to clean up any uh, like random hairs or anything like that and just make the brows look a tiny bit more precise. Um, and then I'm going to move on to priming the eye, of course, and I'm going to be using the Urban Decay Primer Potion, the original, and then on top of that I'm going to apply a little bit of sharp, <laughs> sharp, tart shape tape, and that's just going to even out the lid and get rid of any darkness that she has on the lid and create a blank canvas. Okay, so I'm just going to set my primer with a translucent setting powder, and then I'm going to go in with my Morphe Jaclyn Hill palette. Um, and I'm going to apply a nice transition shade. I'm just using like the lightest brown in the palette, and I'm just applying that right in the crease, and then I'm gonna highlight the brow bone with the first eyeshadow in the palette. It's like that nice, just like creamy, um, highlight shade basically and then I'm going to deepen up the crease a little bit more with a medium brown and um, just add a little bit of depth I was going for kind of like a bronzy smoky eye I guess with wing liner um, yeah just very warm and used a lot of browns golds stuff like that um, but yeah, I'm just applying a little bit more in the crease and now I'm taking a smaller brush and I'm taking a dark brown and I'm going to really start defining that crease and I'm just kind of creating a V shape around her eye and um, winging out the eyeshadow a little bit. She has very big lids, like she just has big eyes in general. That's why I love doing her makeup because there's so much space to work with. Um, so I do kind of like wing out her eyeshadow a little bit, but you know, that obviously won't look best on everybody. Everyone's features are different. But anyways, now moving on, I'm going to just blend even further because of course blending is key. And I just keep going back back in and adding like depth after I blend. Do you want to go back and forth, add a little bit and then blend um, until you get the desired color, shape, all of that. Okay, so now I'm going to cut the lid, or whatever you want to call it, and basically I'm just applying Tarte Shape Tape um, all over the lid space so I can have a nice tacky base for the eyeshadow that I'm going to use. That way the eyeshadow has the most color payoff, but also I just wanted to create a more precise lid. Um, you could just go right in with the whatever lid shade you're going to use and make it more of like a blended, blown out smoky eye but I wanted it to be a little bit more precise and for that I use my masquerade palette um, by Juvia's Place I just use the lightest color in that palette and then I'm going with the golds from the Jaclyn Hill palette and I'm applying that on the center of the eye so I wanted to have two tones on the lid and then I'm going back in with the browns and just blending everything Here I'm just going in and repeating the same steps I just did on the other eye. Thank you. 
Also, I want to mention, um, I did end up going in with a little bit of black, just a little touch of it in the outer corner, just to deepen it up and, sm and smoke out the eyes a little bit more. And I ended up adding just a touch of the shade, I think it's Aziza, from the Juvia's Place Saharan 2 palette. It's like the white gold. Um, I did a little bit of that on the first half of the lid. So here I'm just going in with my gel liner. I'm using the L'Oreal Infallible um, Black Gel Liner that comes in like the little pot. Um, and as you can see, I messed up there, but I wanted to keep it in because I wanted to show you that this stuff happens all the time. Um, all I did is right away I took a Q-tip, smudged it away. It was still pretty wet, so it was easy to kind of smudge. And then I just took the eyeshadow and just went over it and you could barely notice it anymore. Um, but anyways... I added a little bit of Duraline to my eyeliner just so it was easier to apply and didn't tug on the eye. Um, this liner, by the way, for being drugstore is awesome because it's super black and pigmented. And uh, yeah, but if you're not familiar with Duraline, basically it's just a little solution that you can put. Well, actually, it is meant to make liquid liners with eyeshadow pigments. You mix eyeshadow pigment and Duraline and it makes kind of like a liquid liner. But I use it to refresh my gel liners just so they're easier to apply on clients. Um, but yeah, I'm just creating a wing and uh, obviously they take some time. I go back and forth. I'm pretty anal with it. So yeah, I just kind of go back and forth, do one eye, do the other, then I'll go back and fix the other eye. They definitely take take some time, but it's all good. Here I was just adding a little bit more black just to add a little bit more depth, but uh, yeah. Also, I wanted to mention that when you are doing liquid liner, it's always good to lift up the eyes. So go to the brow and lift up a little bit while they're looking down because it will allow you to really get in between those lashes. But anyways, moving on to face, I just applied a little bit of primer. I used the pore uh, no pore blend primer by Touch and Soul. And then I went in with a little bit of liquid illuminator just on the high points of her face. And now I am using my Face Atelier Foundation. I believe this was shade 4. And she has really good skin, so this foundation, um, I don't know, it just it sat really well on her face. Um, sometimes I love it on people, sometimes I'm not a big fan. It just depends. But it worked really well with her skin and um, gave her a nice natural finish. Um, so yeah, I just want to apply that all over the skin and even out the skin. And of course, I'm using a beauty sponge because you just can't go wrong with the beauty sponge. So. Okay, so now I'm going to go in with a little bit of concealer. I'm using Max Pro Longwear Concealer in NW20. And I like to apply this by dipping my beauty sponge directly in the product and then applying it onto the eye rather than taking the concealer on a brush and then blending it with the beauty sponge. Um, but I love this concealer. It's a go-to for me. I always reach for it. Um, I do try and switch it up, but I do feel like you can never really go wrong with this concealer. And you could use it as an eye base because it sets really nicely. But anyways, now I'm going to go in and set the concealer with my RCMA No Color Powder. And I'm going to use my sponge to do this. And then I also took a little bit and set the rest of the face with the sponge. Um, and I just pressed it into the skin really nicely and it gave her a nice like airbrushed finish. Now I'm going to go in and contour. I'm using my Bahama Mama bronzer by The Bomb. I love this bronzer. I use it on everyone. I just feel like it's a nice color. And uh, yeah, can't really go wrong with that bronzer. And I'm using a Morphe brush. I don't remember the name of this brush, but I'm in love with it. I believe it's one of Jaclyn Hill's favorites um, from her collection with Morphe. So yeah, but anyways, I'm just contouring a little bit. And I decided to contour the nose. Now, she has a very nice, petite little nose. I didn't need to contour it, but I just a little bit. It's nothing crazy. You couldn't even really notice. Um, but yeah. Now I'm applying a nice peachy blush. I use a blush from the BH Cosmetics Nude Blush Palette, I believe it is. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to go with more of a peachy shade. To I just felt like it flatter her skin tone more. And now I'm highlighting. I'm taking Glow Getter from the no Nicole Guerrero Glow Kit with Anastasia. And I'm just highlighting her cheekbones and down the bridge of her nose and um, above her lip a little bit.
Okay, so I'm just going to finish off the lower lash line. I'm going to highlight the inner corner with the first shade from the Jaclyn Hill palettes. And then I'm going to take the same gold I used on the lid from that palette and apply it right after the inner corner highlights. Um, I like doing this on people. I just feel like it really adds a little something to the lower lash line. Like aside from adding an inner corner highlight, add another bronzy color or another shimmery color after that. I just feel like it looks really pretty in the eyes. But anyways, I did apply some false lashes. I used Ardell Dummy Wispies. She actually never wore lashes before, so I'm sure it felt a little weird, but um, yeah, they're, they were nothing too dramatic. And then I'm just applying this lip liner. It's actually funny because I thought this color would be perfect for her. It's by Milani in the color Spice. And it turns out she uses it all the time. She's like, oh my god, is that Milani's lip liner? So, um, yeah. But anyways, I'm just giving her a nude lip. And then I'm applying NYX Intense, Intense Butter Gloss. I forget the shade. I'll list it in the description box. But it was just like a pinky shade. And then I applied Peanut Brittle on top to make it a little bit more nude. And then I applied a little bit of mascara on her bottom lashes just to finish off the eyes. But, yeah. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you liked it, please subscribe, hit like, and uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in my next video.